Now it's time to do our flip-flops. I've decided I'm going to do purple for this painting. I actually did um, orange, as you saw in the demonstration. I really love this orange with this blue here. Um, but I'm going to toss it up a little bit just to make it a little different. Um, and so this is the section we're going to do now. Okay, we're going to put in these flip-flops. We're going to start with a purple. You can use whatever color you want. The reason why this looks so good is because blue and orange are opposite each other on the color wheel. So they're going to have the most vibrant look when they're next to each other. Okay. That's the reason why this painting looks good because you, and if you also look that this is blue and this is sort of an orangey sand color and it's divided in half, that sort of creates a beautiful sort of symmetrical, um, asymmetrical divide with the two colors that are opposite each other on the color wheel. That's why this is so vibrant and cool, okay? But I also wanna do a different color to show you how the look changes um, and just toss it up. I don't really like doing the same thing over and over again. I'm weird. Some people like to do the same thing over and over and over again. But I like to do things differently each time that I do it just to try to push it a little different direction. And this particular one, I did a starfish there, okay? But we may change that. We'll just decide when we come to it, okay? We may change, uh, you know, what shells we put here. I don't know. Who knows what will happen? But we're going to do this shape right here. It's sort of, sort of kidney shaped, I guess, without really being for it. We don't want this line here to be too curved. So let's put those in. Um, I got a purple, and I put it here. Now, you see, I just want to tell you, full disclosure, that was the original purple that I put on there, and we're going to use that for shadows. But I have a little lighter purple, and you can add white to that purple and make a light purple. Okay? Just add a little bit of white, just a touch of white to that purple to make this color. Okay? Um, but I have some in a tube that's that color. So I'm going to use this for the base, and then I'll put some highlights and um, darks in there. Let's clean our flat brush. Actually, let's not use a flat brush. Let's use a round brush to draw our shape and then fill it in. Okay? So I am cleaning my brush out really good, and I'm going to make sure I get that water out. We want this to be kind of dryish. Um, some of my little spots here are a little bit tacky still. We may get a little pickup, but we'll we'll deal with it. All right, positioning. We're going to have our the position of our shoe um, sort of coming here, uh, in, up kind of like it's on going into the water. Okay, so let's just jump right in here. I've got my round brush. And what I want to do first is the position of it. So I really like that there. I wish I hadn't put done such a good job there. I'm going to end up covering up some of that, but that's okay. This is what the painting is about. So let's go up here. We're going to make a shape. First going on the inset of the shoe. Down at the bottom. It sort of looks like a peanut, I guess, but not completely. You're not going to go in here. This one, you're going to just go like a, a almost straight, okay? So we've got that one. The bottom sort of fans out just a little bit wider, like this, okay? We're not going to fill it all in yet. Let's go do the other one real quick. And we're, we're not going to do this right next to this one. We're going to drop this second sandal down and sort of put it in the crook of the first one. And we're not going to let them touch. We don't want them to touch. Okay, this one, the bottom is like a foot instead of like a flip-flop. So we're going to wind that up a little bit like this. Let's go ahead and fill in our paint. And, you know, some of this may still be a little wet. That's okay. Let's Let's just get it covered good. Okay, get good coverage and try to be, oop, I say that, I said try to be neat while I messed up my painting. So you can sort of square this up a little bit and then we made our foot kind of big there. So now we're going to need to bring this down just a little bit. 
We want to make sure that they're kind of even. And you're just going to fill that in. Now you are going to have texture there from where we did our sand, but we want to make sure that we get good coverage on that sandal, okay? The bottom of that sandal, because that's kind of the focal point of this image. We want to make sure it's that good coverage. So let's get in there and get a nice layer. Oh, I just totally messed that up. Did you see that? Look what I just did. I'm going to take my finger in there and get rid of some of that. I think I can fix that. I just totally flubbed that up. You all will find about me that I'm super transparent about <laughs> making mistakes. I make mistakes all the time, but that's really how I learn. All right, now let's do our straps. I did hit this with a, with a heat gun. But I did get a little bit uh, close, so I've got a couple of bubbles, but hopefully when we get our stuff drawn on there, and some of these may be a little tacky still, so we'll have to be careful. Um, but I got some green. So I'm going to use this bright green. This is crazy. This is not my normal, what I would do, but that's what we're doing today. So I got some, some nice bright green right out of the tube. You can lighten yours up if you have a dark green. You can add white to it. Or a little yellow even and what we're going to do is kind of find where our center strap is going to be I want you to sort of um, first we're going to put a dot here and then we're going to put a dot where we're going to want our strap to meet it right down here on both sides okay can you see those three dots okay we can do the same thing up here we're going to kind of come into the center of the sandal and then we're going to make sure that we know where we want those sandal um, bottoms to, to meet. So we're going to put some dots there to sort of help us to visualize where we're going. It's going to go from thin to fat to thin again, okay? So let's take our brush. We're going to kind of use the tip of our brush. Let's just draw a basic line first and we can refine it. Uh, afterward we're gonna go just slightly off the side so we're gonna start here pressing our brush picking up our brush okay and as you can see with this green we do get quite a bit of show through okay let's do the other one on the other side let's start small just the tip of our brush this one's not going to come quite so far off. Flatten our brush out and then draw it to a point to our polka dot. And like I said, we're going to come back to that in a minute and fix, do another layer to refine that uh, strap. Okay, so let's do the next one. Well, we may have to wait in between these a little bit, but so we're going to do a thin mark, flatten out, and then thin back. That got a little out of hand. Like I say, just thin and then flat push on your brush and then pull up on your brush and you'll get a, a thin to thick line. So thin, thick, thin. Okay, and now we have our cool flip-flop straps. Okay. Now what you're going to want to do is, before we go on, let's switch to a smaller brush, a smaller de detailed brush or one that's not full of paint. You can use your bigger one to do the bigger spaces, but let's just come in here and clean up our lines a little, okay? Make sure our lines are nice and straight. The top right where this is, you can leave it just like that. Or we can, uh, I'm going to add something there as a focal point, but you could leave your sandal just like that. We want to make sure we get enough paint on here where we don't see um, the rest of the painting underneath. But my experience is when you try to do that with that big brush, you end up making the strap even bigger and it, it just gets away from you. Okay, 
So even this right here feels a little bit big to me, but I'm just going to go with it. We'll just pretend like it's, you know, sort of flayed open. And maybe we can correct that a little bit with our, our shading. Now let's grab some of that teal. Okay, I had it here before, but that's actually black now. You don't need black. I just made a mistake. All right, let's take some of this blue and some of this green, this tur teal turquoise green and regular green, and we're going to make some shadows on our strap, okay? And we're going to come back to this color in a minute. After we do, you know, our design up here, we will actually put... <clears throat> some more shadows in probably but let's go ahead and start at the base right where our little thing goes in and let's just draw up okay so we're just showing where the strap goes into the shoe into the sole and coming up and then this one we're gonna I'll go ahead and put this under there from here out we're gonna do that just to show a little shading okay and you, you kind of do want it to blend a little. So do the same thing on the other side. We may end up having to go in and um, darken that again or put some more there in a minute, but let's go ahead and put it in. And now we have our straps, okay? Now, the next thing that we need to do is lay, lay down a layer of white there for whatever flower we're going to do or let it dry really well. I don't know. I just last time I did white and then I did the sea star on top of it, but I was thinking with this one it might be kind of fun to do like a flower. Um I can't decide if it should be an orange flower or if it should be a red flower. I don't know. Or if we should leave it like that. <laughs> Kind of like it like that. But um, I'm going to go ahead and, and let this dry. And 